everybody. Welcome to a, another episode of Two Strike Noise, your favorite holiday baseball history podcast, from what we've been told. My name is Jeff. I'm one half of the show. Joining me, as always, uh, he's actually wearing bells this week. It is none other than Mark A. Johnston. Mark, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm good. I got the uh, Christmas Jingle Bell ornaments for their beard ornaments. They're really sweet. Uh, my wife thinks they're annoying, but I just think they draw more attention to me, which, uh, of course, I hate. Well, you, know. you also can't sneak up on her. I think she likes that. Oh, well, yeah, I'm pretty bad at that anyway, but uh, that's, that's a good point. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, are you, you all prepared for uh, the holidays? I mean, we, we had Thanksgiving, we've had Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and now we're uh, Christmas Eve uh, is where we're recording this. Yeah, well, our house, we celebrate Rickmas. Rickmas? Yes. What about Festivus? Uh, well, I mean, that, that was yesterday. That's the, that's the day before. And uh, I did put on some feats of strength. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Did your wife beat you again, though? <laughs> Physically and yes, in, in the way that you mean. And uh, <laughs> I, I am never one to not air my grievances. Uh, yeah, I understand. That's cool. Well, I don't know if this is going to be uh, released the 25th, 26th or whatever, but it is our holiday show. And I'm, I'm very excited for this. Um, I've, I've got some stuff prepared for once and I'm ready to roll. Wow. It's a Christmas present for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, Mark. Mark mentioned it. This is our holiday show. We've been trying to record this for the past week and we have both just had things every day that has kept us from doing it. So it's a little bit late, but, you know, we're giving a free gift. So we're here. You can re-gift this if, if you like, but we are here uh, for your holiday extravaganza. So let's get right into it. It's going to be a little bit shorter show. We're not going to have a main segment today. Uh, I, I don't think many people are listening to, to podcasts over the holidays anyway, but let's get right into it here. Before we get into the holiday stuff, we do have some actual baseball stuff I want to talk about. Mark, uh, do you watch Saturday Night Live anymore? I uh, haven't watched it for a few years, actually, no. Yeah, so I, I watch it. I watch like probably half of them. I usually watch it during the week if I hear if it's been a good episode or not. And and last week's was supposed to be good, so I watched it. The musical guest was Billie Eilish. I enjoy Billie Eilish, so I was uh, excited to watch this. And uh, at the end of the show, you know, they come out and the host thanks everybody and they're, you know, just kind of everybody standing around. Billie Eilish is there during the goodbyes wearing a... Chicago White Sox Jake Peavy jersey. Oh, nice. What are the odds? Could there be a more random person wearing a more random jersey ever? <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting. I, I don't, I mean, I don't, I'm, I, I like Billie Eilish. I don't know a whole lot. Of, I, I don't know her whole backstory. But, uh, like, Jake Peavy, let's see, he was on the White Sox for five years in the early 2010s. Like, I just, I don't understand how, how that jersey would be the one that she would be wearing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's an interesting choice. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting choice. I don't know the story behind it, but, you know, hey, it's baseball. I'm all about it. Let's see, also this. Uh, over the week on what would have been his 100th birthday, Larry Doby was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, which is the country's highest civilian honor. Doby, of course, was the first person to break the color barrier in the American League just a couple of uh, weeks or months. I'm not sure. It was it was very close after Jackie did it in the National League. He passed away in 2003, 39 years after his playing career ended. Was he finally inducted into the Hall of Fame? Oh, I, I've got another Hall of Fame thing here coming up shortly, but that's uh, that's ridiculous. Game four of the 48 World Series. Uh, Doby became the first black player to hit a home run. In the Fall Classic, he debuted, uh, here it is, I had it written down, three months after Jackie did with the with the Brooklyn Dodgers, okay. and was the first player to go directly from the Negro Leagues to the big leagues. Right, because Jackie spent some time in AAA. Yeah, in Montreal. Yeah, that's right. Robinson was the first player, uh, first baseball player to receive the award. Uh, Roberto Clemente, the second, and then Larry Doby was the third uh, so I said I got something else here about the Hall of Fame. Uh, of course, the Hall of Fame ballots are being cast right now for the uh, for the, the enshrinement that will happen next year. And Adrian Beltre will not be a unanimous selection into the Hall of Fame. Oh, well, I didn't expect so. Yeah, so we can pin it this year on writer Bill Ballou. Okay. Did not vote for him. Ballou, who I can only suspect uh, his nickname is Boomer Ballou. Uh, voted for only two players this year. Those two players were Manny Ramirez and A-Rod. Hmm. 
Interesting choice. Definitely, uh, he, he's definitely okay with letting uh, guys that use the juice in. Yeah, not, apparently so. But not Adrian Beltre, at least not on the first ballot, because can't have that happen. Uh, did you know this, Mark? There is, uh, in Japan, there is an award given out for the trendiest pose of the year. No, I did not know that, and, and I know how much uh, you've liked previous great poses like uh, dabbing. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, so it just, that's kind of an inside joke. But when when we would work games together, uh, long after dabbing had gone out of uh, out of uh, style, if a kid ever showed up, well, not just a kid, anybody showed up in between innings uh, when when people would be put up on the big screen at the Mariners, if anybody dabbed, I would automatically call for their rejection. Yes, and rightfully so, in my opinion. The fact that uh, I, will, I want to give you a guess here of what Japan's trendiest pose uh, last uh, in this last year was. Oh man, uh, I don't know. Uh, I would. I, I'm way behind my time when I say the Ichiro batting stance. Well, but, uh, yeah, it's, it is baseball related, and when I tell you, you're going to go. Well, of course, it was that. Right. Uh, it was Lars Newt Bar Pepper Mill uh, <laughs> celebration. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, because remember, we did stories after the World Baseball Classic, actually during the World Baseball Classic, about how that had just taken over in, uh, yes. in Japan. I don't I don't know how you work that into a casual <laughs> conversation, just doing the pepper mill. But uh, congratulations. Lars Nukbar, one of GQ Japan's Men of the Year and winner of the Trendiest Pose Award. And might I say, we were on the Lars Nukbar train a long time before most people. Were. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that those checks to roll in from. Lars. Yeah, I, I keep checking the uh, mailbox and nothing comes ever. Uh, so, Mark, a couple of weeks ago, I told you about John Smoltz, uh, you know, trying to qualify for the uh, the PGA Tour. Yes, at last check, he wasn't doing so well. Yeah, now I, I this is not about his golfing, but it is. Uh, I did want to mention that I did try to look up the final results and I could not find anything. So I don't have an update as to whether he made it or not. Surely one of our listeners is closely monitoring, maybe even watching golf channel every second of the day. Uh, I think it's on like their third network though, where they play more infomercials than actual golf content, but uh, we'll get an emergency pod out as soon as we know more about John Smoltz qualifying for the PGA tour. But I did see this was a very interesting note. Uh, John Smoltz, if you will remember, closed for a little while in Atlanta. After, he did, yes. I think it was after Tommy John surgery, he came back and he closed for four seasons. And he was quite good. Yeah, he really was. And, and that's what I wanted to talk about here. He had in those four seasons just two fewer saves of uh, four plus outs than Jonathan Papelbon did one wow. fewer than Billy Wagner and more than K rod and twice as many as Craig Kimbrough. <laughs> wow. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. No, he was a solid closer. I remember. Yeah, he really was. Uh, I, I remember cause I was, I was working there in Atlanta at that time and I was very curious to see how that would work. I, you know, he wanted to be a starter again, but uh, he did, you know, for four seasons, he was a closer and really one of the best in the league. And mm -hmm. uh, really stacks up well with all the other closers uh, in that in that period. Absolutely. Let's see. So a couple of rule changes uh, I wanted to talk about really quick here. First of all, going back to Japan, our second Japanese story of the day, the NPB has uh, well, not the NPB, the uh, Baseball Japan has put a rule on the book, essentially implementing the ghost runner on second in the 10th inning. Now, this has gotten a lot of publicity on uh, baseball social media over the last week or so. It is on the book, but this does not mean that the NPB will be adopting it. Oh. Nothing yet, but it is there. I don't see that. I, I mean, I don't think anybody in Japan is, is calling for the end of tie games. They, right. It's not a big deal to normal people. Right. <laughs> so I don't think everything I've read says that they are not going to adopt this. But Baseball Japan has this on the book. It seems like the leagues can individually decide whether they want to do this or not. And I doubt this is going to happen, but it's on the book there. So Rob Manfred continues to <sighs> affect the game. I guess. Have an effect on the game. Yes. Yeah. Even though both you and I don't really hate that rule. <laughs> It's, no, no, it, it, I, I did at first, but as it shortened my days and my nights, I became rather fond of it. 
but I understand people that when people say they don't like it, I get it. Yeah, I know why. absolutely. I, I am not going to give anybody grief if they don't like that. Um, it is a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty, I don't want to say earth shattering, but it's a pretty game altering rule compared it to is. what had been played for so long. I will admit, I will turn on a game I don't care. If it's the Royals versus the Marlins and it goes to extra innings, I will probably switch over to it because it is more exciting. I will yes. I will say that. That's true. Another rule, this one in the MLB, beyond beyond tweaking with the tweaking the clock a little bit more, which is weird because they went the opposite direction of that they'd been saying, they are going to widen the running lane to first base a little bit. I saw that. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, this is if I was commissioner for a day or just given one thing that I could do as a commissioner. First of all, I would uh, I would make John Fisher uh, put him in jail, uh, make him forfeit the team to me and they would stay in Oakland. But the second thing I would do would be to get rid of that ridiculous rule that uh, you can call runners out for running in the baseline to get to first base. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's it's not even an enforced rule half the time. No, oh, it is it, when when my team uh, is right. the one that gets hit by the ball while they're running to first base. Right. Yeah. Well, that seems to be true as well. Yeah. But uh, this is they're only widening it like a foot. So they're still going to all this is going to do is make it muddier. Right. Because instead of having to be in that lane, which was in foul territory. Now that's a judgment call as to whether they were the foot or foot and a half, whatever they're widening it to. Uh, I hate it. <laughs> I don't like it. But nevertheless, there is a there is a, a, a new rule for the MLB that uh, will take place next year. Let's see. Before we get to, uh, we kind of got a main, main segment. You and I are going to play a little holiday game here. But uh, I wanted to first of all hit birthdays because uh, we we don't do debuts in the off season, of course. But uh, this show is probably going to debut on December 25th, and it's our holiday show anyway. And uh, I would be remiss without naming the greatest baseball player to ever live, uh, who just so happened to be born on December 25th, 1958, in Chicago, Illinois, in the back of a car. It is none other than Ricky Henderson. Yes, of course. The reason for my season is Ricky Henderson. Now, I was uh, I did look up who else's birthday uh, is on December 25th. Two other Hall of Famers. So it's a pretty good day when you've got three Hall of Famers being born on the same day. Wow, I guess. Besides Ricky Henderson, you've got Pud Galvin, pitcher from the 1850s and 60s. Or not that, no, he was born in the 1850s. Played in the 1870s and 80s. I'm sorry, that was... uh, Gross uh, misrepresentation of the facts there. And then uh, also Nellie Fox, pitcher for uh, mainly the White Sox during the 1950s, uh, also a Hall of Famer. Some other names that we, uh, our listeners probably know, Manny Trio was born today, 1958. Hideki Okajima, fun name to say. Oh, okay. Uh, Willie Tavares, and then Eric Hilgis. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to get an A's picture in there uh, from 2001 and 2002. <laughs> just, uh, probably Very nice. One of the few guys that remembers Eric Hilgis, but yeah, I wanted to get him in there. All right. Uh, we're going to do uh, kind of a different trivia question. First of all, let's get to uh, last week's trivia question. Who was the last player to get a hit off of Satchel Page. We got a ton of correct answers here. I like it. I think a lot of people probably went into uh, Baseball Reference and looked at his game log and uh, saw that it was Carl Yastrzemski, which I thought was pretty cool that uh, the, the final hit he gave up was to a Hall of Famer. Yes, yes, very cool. And uh, Satchel Page was only 704 years old when that happened. Right. So he was still about halfway through his career. Yeah, he was. Uh, despite the fact it was the last batter he gave up a hit to. He's yeah, halfway through his career. Uh, let's see. Easy trivia question, Mark, for uh, for the holiday. This is our holiday gift to you. It's not even really so much a question. Well, it's a question, but uh, there's no right or wrong answer here. Uh, the question that I have come up with is, Mark, who would have the better season in their prime? Nolan Ryan leading off and playing the outfield, or Ricky Henderson as a starting pitcher? Oof. Wow, well, you got a lefty against a righty here. Yeah, I, I don't think this is really a question. Yeah, usually if I give you a question and Ricky Henderson is a possible answer, that means Ricky Henderson is the answer. We, we right. know that. But I don't think that that would be the case. I don't know. What, what kind of batter was Nolan Ryan? 
Do you know off the top of your head? It, not not the best you've ever seen. Let's take a quick look at Nolan Ryan's batting stats. Uh, over 27 years of pitching, obviously he didn't hit uh, in all those seasons. Overall, he had 852 at-bats. So that's more than a season's worth. Yeah. Lifetime 110 average, 148 on base. Uh, two home runs. Yes. Two du- uh, two triples, 10 doubles. 36 RBI. That's pretty impressive. In, a, in 800 at-bats. Yeah. <laughs> Three <laughs> stolen bases. <laughs> That's, which is amazing. Yeah, he was caught three times. Uh, let's see, he walked 38 times, and he struck out 371 times. So he almost struck out half the time that he went to the to the plate. Well, he took so many away, he wanted to give a few yeah. back. <laughs> that is an OPS plus of minus 18. <laughs> <laughs> now, one year in 1985 for the Astros, he led the league in sacrifice bunts. No, see, there he's doing his job. Yeah, so, I mean, this maybe you just sit him up there and have him bunt every time. Although yeah. he's got a little pop, you know, two home runs. Yeah, you didn't want him swinging away with a runner on first and less than two outs. No. So as a non-pitcher, uh, he has a career war of minus 2.3. Yeah, that's about where I stood. In, in okay, but now you, you figure he can probably, he would probably do okay in the outfield. He'd probably be below average. Yeah, he, he you know, he, he actually, it was faster than you would have thought. He would have been, he had really good lower body strength. And so he was, he could leg stuff. He pretty. might be able to gun out some runners too from and the outfield. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you would imagine he would have a gun. Yeah. So Ricky obviously never pitched. Ricky would be a left-handed pitcher though. So, you know, he would definitely be right. used. Uh, he never really had much of an arm, especially, I mean, later in his career, but we're looking at, we're, we're taking prime season numbers. So like 89, 90. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not imagining, I think he's going to have to learn how to throw a, a spitter or something, but I, I think I'm actually going to go with my, my vote is for Nolan Ryan. Okay. Well, that surprises me, but, um, <laughs> I, I gotta give that some thought, man. I'm not sure where I land on this one. All right. Well, we'll we'll see. That seems like a good question I might pose at fantasy camp to a couple of players. There you go. I like it. See see what we get from there. Might have some inside dope. Very well might. All right. Uh, Let's do this, Mark. Let's uh, like I said, we don't have a main subject today, but this is our holiday special. So uh, what I ask you to do is I wanted you to put together a list of uh, holiday related baseball names. And I have done the same. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do here, Mark, is I want you, I want you to take your top 10, the best ones you got. Okay. And we're going to read our lists. If our same, if, if a player I name is on your list, we're going to cross them out on both of our lists. After 10 names, we're going to see who has the most left, and they will be deemed the winner. This does not count for Wax Packs Heroes, which we will play afterwards. Okay, yeah, I, I've got a pretty extensive list. I went a little overboard. Yeah, I've got a good, I've got probably 30 names here, but we, we, we're we trying to make this a shorter episode. So we're just going to do 10 each. So pick 10 of your best, and and we'll go from there. All right, I know I have some combined names, too. Now, do those count, or are we just going with one name? Uh... I can do the combined names afterwards. Yeah, just. yeah, because I've got some that are stretches that I'm not going to yeah. use. Okay, yeah. So let's just Me too. ten best, and uh, I'll go first here. I have a feeling this is probably on your list. Uh, catcher from the '80s, Steve Christmas. Yeah, he happened to make the uh, list for me. Yeah. Now I was uh, I I had thought about uh, uh, Hank Honica, Kelly Kwanzaa. Yeah. And uh, some of these others, but I couldn't find them on baseball reference. So Steve Christmas was as good as I had. Yeah, I, I looked as well. I couldn't find anything close. Yeah. Uh, no, you know, there was no uh, Roger Happy New Year. So. <laughs> All right. So there's uh, there's one that is off both of our lists. Why don't you uh, hit me up with one of yours? All right. How about JT Snow? Yep. Yeah, I got that on my list here. Okay. First baseman for the Giants and the Angels. Wasn't he? And I think he was the guy that yanked uh, uh, yanked Dusty Baker's uh, kid out of the way. I think that was him. Yeah, actually. 2002, 2003, something like that. All right. Uh, next, I've got a contemporary player, Corbin okay. Carroll. Oh, that's good. I didn't have that one. 
Oh, there we go. There's one point for me. Corbin Carroll, obviously uh, Arizona Diamondback in the World Series this year. Uh, hit me up with one of yours. All right, Angel Pagan. Oh, no, I don't have that. There we go. Yeah, Angel One piece. Yeah, all right. So pitcher, he's a pitcher. Or no, he was a he's an outfielder, wasn't he? I believe so, yeah. Like the Giants. And I know he was with the Giants. Maybe the Angels, too? I'm not sure. Uh, all right, next I have got a second baseman from the Washington Nationals who played in the 1870s. Wow. Holly Hollingshead. Oh, Holly Hollingshead. That's not on my list. Sounds like a Harry Potter character. <laughs> <laughs> He does, actually. All right. All right. I will take that. So uh, I've got two to your one now. Why don't you hit me up with one? All right. Johan Santana. <laughs> wow. Uh, and that's not on your stretches list? <laughs> no, it's Santa right there in the middle of it. <laughs> yes, but how does he pronounce his name? Santana. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for the object of this game, it's he's, Santa. No. He's not here to to say no. I guess. <laughs> All right, uh, that is a stretch, but I guess we will. If you think that one's a stretch, wait till you hear some of my other ones. All right. All right. <laughs> All right well, how about this one, Bo Jackson? Bo, very good. I don't have that one. Oh, all right. I thought that was going to be one that might uh, might cancel out. All right, so that's three for me. Okay, and I'm imagining you have Jay Bell. I do not. Oh, okay. Yeah, somebody that I've been using in a Immaculate Grid the last couple of weeks, but no, I don't. That's a good one. All right. Uh, how about Candy Maldonado? I, I do have Candy Maldonado. All right. Yes. All right. So that's a that's a wash. Uh, I have Jesus Sucre, which there are a number <laughs> there are a number of Jesuses, but uh, I went with Sucre because of all the sugary snacks around. Sugar the Sugar Jesus, that's right. Sugar Jesus, yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, kind of an inside joke that uh, you would definitely right. get credit for. <laughs> all right, very good. Yeah, I did not come up with uh, Jesus Sucre pitcher as well. He pitched several times, uh, both with the uh, the Mariners and the uh, the Rays, I believe. Let's see. How about this one? Oakland A's uh, reference Coco Crisp. Oh, wow. Another good one. I don't have that one. Yeah. Hot cocoa. And then, yeah. you know, Chris, you crispy things. I don't know. But that, yeah, that's uh, that's one I'm, I'm proud of there. Coco Crisp. All right. OK, good one. All right. Um, should I start with the uh, the food names now? We'll go with Turkey Stearns. OK, yeah. Uh, the holiday turkey. I think it's mainly a holiday ham, but uh, I will I will allow it. Uh, well, that... it, it, it's turkey at my mom's house. All right. It's... And, and, and uh, I want you to know I didn't include Steve Gravy, uh, Garvey in this one. Uh, uh, I have him, you, Yeah, I have him written down in the uh, in the stretches and I used him last week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, how about, uh, he was a pitcher, but I know him mainly as a manager, Cookie Rojas. Ooh, that's good. No, I don't have Cookie. All right. And I love cookies. I do too, very much. And if they're red, uh, even better. Isn't, doesn't Rojas mean red or, or hot or something? I don't know. But cookie, <laughs> cookie's the main part there. All right. All right, not bad. All right, since we're going with food, I'm going to go with Chuck Dressen. <laughs> You could have also gone with Kirk Dressendorf. That's true. <laughs> and uh, or Dan Salad Dreesen. <laughs> yeah, that one might be in the stretch category. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh we've done eight each. Uh right now I have five. Uh, what is your score? I I haven't been keeping track well, of it. Well, we'll say four, four then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Uh my eighth one is Matt Holiday. Oh, man, how did I miss that one? I don't know. Terrifying. Yeah, okay. Give me one of yours. Willie Star, Jill. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> you know the Christmas star, Jill? Yeah, no, no, I got it. All right, for my last one, I have got a team. I have okay. got the Boston Red Stockings. That's good, man. Yeah. That's good. I didn't go that direction. You went with the white stockings, probably. <laughs> right. Now, what was I thinking? All right. You're going to call this one a stretch, but I think it's brilliant. Lee Tinsel Lee. Well, again, I, if, if Lee was here, I'd have to ask him how he pronounces his last name. <laughs> Why? I think it's dead on. <laughs> Tinsel Lee. Yeah. Uh, 
All right. Just, I, well, just because maybe you, I have an accent or you, something. You've referenced uh, you've referenced Lee Tinsley, so I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. All right. So after ten uh, names here, I have a score of seven. Yes, uh, I, I believe I have six. Okay, I was just making up that you were one less than me, but I'll uh, I'll allow it. Uh, no, not bad. <laughs> so uh, let, let's go through some of these names that we didn't use really quickly here. I used kind of close to one of your names. I got Brendan Clawson. Oh, that's good. Santa Claus. I, I did not have that. Uh, Lorenzo Candy Cane, which that- I, uh, I actually have uh, him mashed up with Candy Maldonado to give us Candy Cane. Oh, very nice. <laughs> uh, Dave Frost, who was a pitcher in the 70s Ooh. and 80s. Right. Didn't get that one either. Uh, Lucas Giolito. Now you might say, "What? What?" Uh, his middle name is Frost. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ray Starr, who was a pitcher in the '30s and '40s, so that was that's kind of along the lines of Stargell. Yeah. Uh, Albert Jingle Bell. Oh, very good. <laughs> uh, then I've got some more stretches here. I've got Charlie Furbush. That's, you know, fir that's trees. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, Dick Pole, for those who celebrate Festivus. Festivus, very yeah. good. Uh, Greg Minton. <laughs> I really <laughs> like that one. That's good. <laughs> the Moon Man. Uh, Rob Reindeer. Well, see, I combine him with Tim Raines. Oh, very nice. Tim Raines and Rob Deer, we get Reindeer. Got it. Uh, how about Rick Cyber Monday? Oh, very good. <laughs> and then I've got a uh, pitcher from the Nationals from 1923, Skipper Black Friday. <laughs> and then my final stretch is Dan Ugla Holiday Sweater. Now, that may be the best one so far. Right? <laughs> All right. What were some of yours that didn't make the cut? Well, I have a uh, Termel Sled. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you get that. And then I, I actually thought, what about Yuli Guriel with Ty Cobb giving us Yule Tie? Um, Johnny Sane and Brett Nicholas gives us St. Nicholas. Oh, wow. Uh, do you remember Gift Ngope? No. Okay, he played very little, but he played. So I combined him, since he was a stretch, I combined him with So Tag Uchi. And we have Gift Tag. <laughs> Um, this is one of my favorites. Dale Crandall with Sean Barry. Oh. <laughs> Cranberry. All right. This is the stretchiest of stretches. Uh, Peanuts Davis and Zach Britton, Peanut Britton. <laughs> yeah, that one was a bit of a stretch. How, how about this one? One of my favorite songs, Jeff Hawley and Ivy Andrews for the uh, Holly and the Ivy. I don't know that song. Oh, it, it, it's a nice classic. Though. I probably know it if I heard it. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, I don't think it has any words, is the thing. But um, speaking of songs, I kind of wrote uh, my own version here of uh, Baseball, 12 oh. Days of Christmas. Are, are we going to are we gonna get sued? Is this going to be a copyright infringement? No, no, this is a... This is a Original. Well-used uh, tune, which I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to give you the quotes. 12 Days of Christmas. So okay. I'm just going to go through it once. I'm not going to start with one. Okay. And then do two, one. And then three, two, one. All right. We're going to start with 12. All right. Right. 12, Tim Drummond's drumming. 11, Piper Davis piping. Okay. I don't this know. is my favorite. Okay. 10, Gerald Laird's a leaping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nine, Ladies Dance B. Swanson. <laughs> Okay. This is in the stretch category. <laughs> All of them are. Yeah. Okay. Louis Maduro milking. Who? Louis Ma- Maduro. Louis Maduro? Well, sure, but I have an accent. Remember? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Made a milking. <laughs> okay. Uh, seven Russ Swans a swimming. Okay. Now, see, there's there's some quality work right there. Six Goose Gossage Elaine. Okay. I'll take that. Five Gold Royce Rings. Like Royce Clayton? Royce Ring. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't. I don't know Roy Spring. Okay. Four calling Paul birds. Three Luke French hens. <laughs> okay. Two Dennis doves and Jay Partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> okay, I knew like three of those guys. <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's pretty impressive, though. What's uh, the collective war of all of these guys? Uh, four. <laughs> I think Goose Gossage probably had more than that. But. The rest were negatives. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, good work. 
take. <laughs> so I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and what was funny is I kept coming up with them and I would read them to my wife and expecting her to laugh or to say good one. And she just every single time rolled her eyes. She had a 100% rolling her eyes. <laughs> well, that's a hundred percent response. That's really all you could ask. Mm-hmm. Very true. All right. So hopefully that, uh, that song is in uh, public domain, consider public domain by now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure it is. There's been some really bad versions of it, including mine. So uh, The McKenzie brothers, they'll have one of the best. Yes. Uh, we we'll go back to eight comic books, seven packs of smokes, <laughs> six uh, packs of two fours, five golden toques, uh, four pounds of back bacon, three French toasts, two turtlenecks, and a beer yeah. in a tree. Yeah, beer in a tree. <laughs> I love the McKenzie brothers. I'm going to Absolutely. watch Strange Brew tonight just for that. that that's a, that is one of my absolute favorite yeah, movies. That's a one that I quote quite often. Now, can I, can I point real quickly out a, a mistake I saw in a Christmas movie recently? Absolutely. It had to do with baseball. Okay. I was watching, it's called 8-Bit Christmas, and it's actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, there's a scene in it where the kids are trying to come up with money to buy their own Nintendo. And they actually land the Billy Ripken error card. Oh, I've heard they look up this. in a yeah. Beckett and it's 95 bucks. So they, they're partway there. And then later on in the show, the dad is filming Christmas morning and the mom says Christmas morning, 1988. Now you see what I'm saying here? We, that was an 89 Fleer. Oh my God. The movie. You believe ruined. the huge mistake there? The movie is ruined. <laughs> totally screwed it up. <laughs> I, you should have seen me jump out of my chair. Oh, that was an 89 flare. You, well, I hope you just turned it off in disgust right then. Oh, I kicked the television. I got to get a new one. Okay, well, that doesn't change the air, though. You need... <laughs> no, it didn't. I watched it again on my neighbor's TV, oh, uh, controlling and... myself this time, and, and it didn't change the air. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll, I'll get right on that. Let's. Uh, I'll call up Hollywood after we're done here. Yeah, thank you. All right, so that's, uh, that's enough holiday frivolity <laughs> that's enough that was very f- fr- frivolous was frivolous yeah all right mark uh it is time it's going to be our last uh, wax packs hero of the year now if i look at the score i can see my score you're so far back i'm having a hard time picking you up back there uh it is 16 to 11 uh, we're playing to 20 i'm on a hot streak here i i can't be stopped I'm feeling confident. Don't even mind telling you so. Uh, Today, we are going to... I've got some more of these 2003 tops, which don't really fall into the Wax Packs category, but we've been getting some really good names that we haven't pulled before while we've been using these, so I think we're going to go with this again uh, for today. So uh, let's just get right into it. Our final episode of the uh, season for Wax Packs. Wax Pack Hero! All right, so uh, if you are new here, uh, these are the rules. We're going to open up these packs of 2003 uh, cards. We are going to then take the uh, baseball reference war from 2003 from each of these players. We'll add them up. Whoever at the end has the highest amount of war is going to get the win. But a couple of things that can uh, alter the score here. First of all, if there's anything on the player's face, that means sunglasses, sunglasses, uh, it means go- if they've got binoculars to their uh, to their eyes, uh, anything like that, mustaches, eye black, any of that, it's an extra tenth of a point. It's a really good Tom Selleck esque mustache. Will give you a, a bonus, uh, so it'd be two tenths of a point. Uh, if they're wearing real stirrups, or we can see sanitary socks, that's good. That's an extra tenth of a point. Two and ones though, it's a minus tenth of a point. That's just lazy. Uh, any awards won in two thousand and three? That means Rookie of the Year, Cy Young, MVP, and All Star, or a Gold Glove. You get a half a point each. If there's a Hall of Famer on the card, even if they are not the focus of the card, that's a whole extra point of war. If Ricky Henderson shows up on anybody's card, mine or Mark's, I get five points. And that's the end of that rule because uh, Nolan Ryan's not going to show up in these uh, 2003 right. cards. I, I, I don't, unless we go back into some 70s cards. Yeah. I don't really have much <laughs> of a chance with Nolan. Uh, yeah, well, tough yeah. luck. Uh, let's see, any pop culture references that we can find easily, you get a half a point for those, unless any of those references are from The Simpsons, Seinfeld, or Sabrina the Teenage Witch. That's a whole point for each of those. Uh, if the player was uh, named in the Mitchell Report or suspended at any point for PED use or other th- 
things that they shouldn't be doing. That's a minus half a point. Mark and I are each going to pick a team. If my team shows up in either pack, I get half a point. If it, Mark's team shows up in either pack, he gets half a point. Mark, which team are you going to go with today? I thought I'd go with my Christmas wish and take the Seattle Mariners. All right. Well, I'm going to stick with the holiday theme, and I'm going to go with the Red Stockings. Very nice. Uh, I was also thinking here for this special holiday episode, if anybody's name that we pull can even loosely be associated with the holidays, kind of like the game we were playing earlier, let's go half a point. All right. I'm, I'm up for that. You've heard me stretch a few. Yeah, well, I mean, I we, we have to agree on it. So oh, okay. Well, yeah, that might be rougher. You won't get me Lee Tinsley? No, I'm probably, probably not going to give you Lee Tinsley. Uh, but uh, here we go, Mark. I've got two packs, one in my left hand, one in my right hand. Which one would you like? Well, you know, we, we aren't mathematically eliminated yet. I just wanted to point that out. So let's let's not start popping the corks too early. Too late. We, if we were to win this, uh, it would be the biggest comeback in the history of wax Not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go right this right. time. All right, I'm going to have you go first. And uh, we are going to start off here with outfielder for the Colorado Rockies. It's Juan Pierre. Juan Pierre. Ball player. Yeah, I think of him more with the uh, Marlins than anybody. But Right. Let's see. 14 years in the big leagues. Four with the Marlins. Three with the Dodgers. Three with the Rockies. Two with the White Sox. And then the Cubs and the Phillies for a year each. In 2003. Well, good news for you. He, he got MVP votes. Uh, a lot of black ink here, too. Uh, played 162 games. Led the league in plate appearances and at-bats. As well as stolen bases with 65. As well as caught stealing with 20. And sacrifice bunts with 15. Uh, 305 average, 361 on base, one home run, 41 RBI, and that is good for a 3.5 war right off the bat. Wow. He has got a mustache as well, so you'll get an extra tenth of a point. That looks like that's about it. Now, he is wearing a double flap helmet, which is cool, but uh, there's no no rule that that's going to help us. No, not this time around, no. Now, there's an old Christmas hymn called I Wonder As I Wander. Do I get that? Juan Pierre, no. Wander, no. Okay, just check it. Wander Franco, but he, he would get the minus points for the. Yes, end. he certainly would. Uh, let's see. Traded by the Rockies with Mike Hampton to the Marlins for Vic Derenberg, Charles Johnson, Pablo Azuna, and Preston Wilson. Oh wow, there are some names. All right, but I mean that's a good start. You're at three point six after one card. I think that's better than your score from last uh, week. Uh, next, we've got oh oh good this uh, a member of the Boston Red Stockings. Uh, uh, knuckleballer Tim Wakefield. Oh, he just passed ooh. away. That's, uh, forgot about that. Yeah. Let's see. Tim Wakefield, 19 years in the big league, 17 with the Red Sox. He came up with the Pirates for two years, and then the rest of it was all with the Red Sox. In 2003, he went 11 and 7 with a 4.09 ERA. Uh, let's see, 200 innings, 202 innings, 169 strikeouts, a 114 ERA plus, and that is good for a 3.6 war. Wow. Plus, he's got a, a mustache, so that you've more than just doubled your score right there. But he is a member of the Red Sox, so that's yes. a minus half a point right there. Uh, let's see, two World Series with the, uh, with the Red Sox and an all-star at the age of 42 in 2009. Had a personal catcher for a long while, mm -hmm. Doug Mirabelli. Yeah, I remember that. And they traded him away to, like, the Padres. And uh, the Red yes. Sox, I remember, just struggled, struggled behind the plate when he was pitching. And they eventually got him back that same year. <laughs> it was, it was and that is not an easy job. I remember his mitt being pretty big. Oh, yeah. I, what was it? Uh, Bob Euchre said the easiest way to catch a knuckleball is to wait for it to stop rolling and then go and pick it up. Just pick it up. There you go. Oh, let's see. A partner in a was a partner in a restaurant uh, with uh, NHL player Sean Thornton. Huh. And of course, we have uh, everybody's least favorite scumbag. Kurt Schilling was the one that broke the news that uh, that Tim Wakefield was uh, diagnosed with cancer uh, before he wanted it to be out there. Kurt Schilling just took it on himself to do that. Well, what can you say? There's a reason we don't talk about Kurt Schilling. All right. Uh, you're at six point. Eight, you have got, oh, you've got a tops rated rookie here mm. with the Tigers, shortstop Ramon Santiago. So we got to hope that they really factor defense into his uh, war. Let's see, 13 years in the big leagues for Ramon, 10 with the Tigers, two with your Seattle Mariners, and then one Sorry. with the Reds. Uh, let's see, in 2003 with the Tigers, 
Led the league in sacrifice uh, bunts. Your second you guy to do that. Uh, let's see. Overall, 225 average, 292 on base, two home runs, 29 RBI, 10 stolen bases, and a 59 OPS plus. And that will equal a minus 0.8. <laughs> Ramon was not known for swinging a, a big stick. <laughs> uh, nothing else on this card is going to help you out either. doesn't have any facial hair or anything like that. Uh, he was traded by the Tigers with Juan Gonzalez, not the Juan Gonzalez, uh, to the Mariners for Carlos Guillen. Interesting. This, car, this uh, Juan Gonzalez uh, that he was traded for never made it to the big leagues. Of course not. He was traded to the Mariners. Okay, so you're at six even. Next, uh, this oh boy, this is somebody I was trying to remember who else he played for uh, with the Immaculate Grid. But here he is with the Pirates third baseman, Aramis Ramirez. And I believe it was the Cubs that he also played for that I was trying to remember. He had a pretty long career, if I remember right. Yeah, 18 years. Yeah, wow. Yeah, 18 years. Cubs for nine, Bucks for seven, Brewers for four. 2003, his first year with the Cubs, 259 average, 314 on base, 15 home runs, 39 RBI, and a 105 OPS plus, and that is good for a war of 0.6. It's a positive number. Yes, it is. Now, there are a lot of people on this card. Uh, It's after a game, and they're going through, they've uh, clearly won, and they're going through a a high five line, but uh, I do not see anybody here. In the uh, early 2000s, Pirates that would be a Hall of Famer. I see Jack <laughs> no. Wilson. I see Jack Wilson. That's uh, that's yeah. it. Well, yeah. When you think Hall of Famers and multiple Hall of Famers from the same team, they, you don't think of the 03 Pirates. I agree. No, you, <laughs> you really don't. Yeah. All right. So you're at uh, 6.6. Uh, oh, you got an Oakland Athletic here, and I know what oh, nice. you're. I know the first thing that comes to my mind when I say his name, and and probably yours too. It's Terrence Long. You, you're talking about the Ichiro throw? I'm talking about something straight out of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, that's where my mind went to. Great. Uh, Dave Niehaus with that call. T. Long trying to go from first to third on a single to right in Ichiro's rookie season. Was that even, that might have even been the first series of the season? I can't remember. I just remember it was early and we were all still getting used to Ichiro and he threw that thing. And I remember Terrence Long slides in. Gets tagged out, stands up, and has a look on his face like, come on. Yeah. Uh, you got to be kidding me. What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How does that happen? Uh, let's see. T-Long, eight years in the big leagues, four with the A's, uh, a couple of years for us. Some other teams. Uh, in 2003, hit 245, 293 on base, 14 home runs, 61 RBI, 78 OPS plus, And that is a war of exactly 0.0. <laughs> it sounded pretty average to me, too, yeah. Oh, it's too long. Uh, he does have a mustache here, though, so you will get the uh, the tenth of a point there. Uh, so far, nothing really uh, holiday-ish here. Terrence Long, Aramis mm-hmm. Ramirez, Ramon Santiago, Tim Wakefield, and Juan Pierre. Not really a whole lot here. Uh, let's see. T. Long, first round draft pick by the Mets in 1994, traded with Leo Vasquez to the A's for Kenny Rogers, the gambler. Nice. I remember when that trade happened because Kenny Rogers, for some reason, before he was an athletic, never lost pitching in Oakland. Like he he never lost a game pitching in Oakland, I think. And uh, yeah, he pitched okay for the for the A's. Then he was traded with Ramon Hernandez from Oakland to San Diego for Mark Kotze. Oh. Those are just, those are some seminal names for A's players, or, uh, A's players, A's fans, right there. Okay, next uh, you have got a uh, pitcher here for the Rockies, closer, Todd Jones. Yeah, I don't think there's anything holiday-wise in Todd Jones either. I'm jonesing for some holiday gifts. Yes. Now, would, if I had CC Sabathia, would I get credit for Candy Cane? I don't think so. Yeah, that's worth a try. That one's, that one's a real stretch. Well, I mean, if I look up CC on Baseball Reference and the, the two C's stand for Candy Cane, sure. But No, they, they stand for Chocolate Cake. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Uh, 16 years in the big leagues. Wow. He just played for a lot of teams. I'm not, I'm not going to name them, but he played for a lot of them, mainly with the, uh, the Tigers and the Astros in 2003. He split time between Colorado and Boston. He's not in a Red Sox uniform though, in this card, unfortunately for me, overall three and five, 7.08 ERA. That is not good. Uh, 68 innings, 58 strikeouts, a 69 ERA plus, Ooh. And all of that will equal a war of minus 1.3. Ouch, Todd Jones. He does have a mustache. He's got that like Fu Manchu yes. kind of thing going on. He had the whole Hogan going on, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think he had more lettuce on top of his head than, than Hogan did, though. 
Well, a lot of people do. <laughs> well, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no offense, Jeff. I bet. First round draft pick by the Astros in 1989. He's been traded for and with a lot of people. Doug Brocale, Brian Hunter, Brad Osmus, Jose Lima, CJ Nitkowski. Uh, a lot of names that I'm sure a lot of our listeners are familiar with. Uh, let's see. Oh, we've talked about this before. He wrote a weekly, weekly column called The Closer for the Sporting News. That's right, yeah. And I, th- I thought he claimed somebody was cheating or something. I don't, I don't remember all of the, uh, the details, but I know we've talked about Todd Jones before. All right, so you're at 5.5. You're going the, the other way now. You've got three cards left. Uh, let's see here. Now you have got uh, second baseman for the Cincinnati Reds. I remember this guy. He came up as a third baseman for the Twins because I saw him in Salt Lake in the minors. It is Todd Walker. Todd Arthur Walker. 12 years in the big leagues, five with the Twins, three with the Cubs, a bunch of other teams, including the A's. I don't remember that. In <laughs> 2007 for 18 games. Uh, in 2003, he was with the Red Sox. 283 average, 333 on base, 13 home runs, 85 RBI, 95 OPS plus, and that is good for a 1.1 war. But he was with the Red Sox. Well, but he's in a Reds jersey here. Oh, lucky me. Uh, I don't see anything on this card that is going to help you. Uh, There is Benito Santiago standing behind him. (laughs) Which is pretty cool. Just I didn't even know Benito Santiago played in 2002. But <laughs> apparently, a lot of teams Todd Walker played for. Yeah, uh, first round draft pick by the Twins in 1994. That is that is a, a definite category I struggle with on Immaculate Grid is first round draft pick. But yet when we do this, we go through it and like every other player is a first round draft pick. Yeah, I know that's interesting. I just don't remember because I'm old. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember a lot of the draft picks either, either unless they're like recent. It used to not be that big of a deal. Now it's a huge deal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, uh, your next card is a manager's card. Oh, lucky me. <laughs> uh, and it is Dusty Baker. Oh, okay. Uh, you're not going to get any numbers from it, but he is wearing glasses. So uh, you'll get a, a tenth of a point there. I don't know. You baker, you bake holiday goods. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that's a bit of a stretch. So I'm okay. Gonna... <laughs> now this is an interesting card because it looks like it's definitely spring training at Scottsdale stadium in the background here. He is posed with uh, his left hand on his hip. His right hand is pointing kind of just off camera with two uh, his index and middle finger extended. His uh, inside of his hand is covered with rosin. It's white. I, I'm assuming it's rosin. I don't. I don't think he was involved in the Pittsburgh drug trials. But uh, and, and then his other hand that's on his hip, I can see it's got a ton of rosin on it as well. So I don't know if they just had like a rosin fight before this picture was taken or what. But you're only getting a, a tenth of a point out of this card. Yes, but now he did. We did mention J.T. Snow earlier, and it was J.T. Snow. J.T. Snow who rescued Darren Baker um, All right. from being run over at home plate. Well, there you go. All right, your final card, you're at 6.7. Your final card is pitcher for the Angels here. It is Dennis Cook. Dennis Cook, 15 years in the big leagues. Uh, Let's see, Mets for four, Phillies for three, a bunch of other teams uh, for one or two seasons. And uh, unfortunately for you, 2002 was his final year in the big leagues. Nice. Nice. I so mean, the way this card and a guy who wouldn't play no more. The way the way you were going, though, I mean, that's better than a negative. Uh, <laughs> nothing else on this card is going to help you out either. So uh, it looks like, well, let's let's check. I, I doubt that there's any uh, pop culture references to Dennis Cook. Yeah, I don't think so. He he was uh, Team Sweden's well, head there coach you go. in 2010. I'm, I'm part Swedish, so I have a you know some kinship. To him. There you go. Uh, let's see. So that is going to be a six point seven for you. I don't think that's a strong score. The, the guy is definitely a cheat code for Immaculate Grid, though. Dennis Cook. <laughs> Let's see. How many teams has he been on? One, two, Giants, three, Phillies, five, Dodgers, six, Indians, seven, White Sox. Eight, Indians nine. again. Rangers, Marlins, Mets, Phillies, Angels again. Nine different teams. Yeah. Wow. A bit. All right. So you are at 6.7. Write that down. That's a good cheat code right there. All right. I'm going to be starting um, off with a pitcher for the Dodgers. It is Kaz Ishii. Okay. I, I think that pretty much spells holiday. It just Kazuishi. I think I think it's really close. Kazuishi? Kaz, Kazuishi Ishi. Uh, let's see. Four years in the big leagues, three with the Dodgers, one with the Mets. I only remember the one with the Mets. 
Uh, let's see, 2003 with the Dodgers, 9-7, and 7, 3.86 ERA, 147 innings pitched, 140 strikeouts, 105 ERA plus, and that is good for a war of 0.7. Not as good as your 3.6 to start out, but I mean, at least it's yes. positive. Uh, nothing Hopefully on this, you match the rest of mine, though. <laughs> nothing on this card is going to help me out at all. He was the manager and GM for a year for the uh, Rakuten, Rakuten Golden Eagles. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Also uh, played for the Occult Swallows and the Cebu Lions. You throw a, a no-hitter in the NBP. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Married to a, a television presenter. Ayoki Kisa, hmm, yeah. and has one child, Kanta, which is very close to Santa. <laughs> if I got Johan Santa, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, that'll be a point seven. Uh, my next card is, uh, let's see, third baseman here for the Angels, Troy Glouse. 13 years in the big leagues, seven with the Angels, two with the Cardinals, two with the Blue Jays, and then the D-backs in Atlanta for one apiece. Good news, 2003 was an all-star year for him. Overall, 248 average, 343 on base, 16 home runs, 50 RBI, and a 113 OPS+. plus. Wow, he led the league in home runs in 2000 with 47. I, I don't remember that. That's I amazing. I don't either. Uh, let's see, an overall for 2003, that is a war of 1.3 plus. He was an all-star, so that'll be a 1.8. Nothing on the card is going to help me out at all. I love this note here that, that's by his name. Uh, Gloss became a candidate for induction into the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum for the first time, November 9th, 2015. He received no votes. <laughs> Thanks. Nor Thanks should he. That was really good. Nor should he, I think. Uh, first round draft pick by the Angels in 97 uh, was traded at one point for Miguel Batista and Orlando Hudson, as well as for Scott Rowland. Troy Santa Claus, is that? Uh... Ooh, that's not bad, actually. <laughs> I know. I was I was kind of saying it jokingly, but then once I, you know, looking at how he spells his name, I'm like, ah. It just all you got to do is take one line away and it's a C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that one might be a stretch, but uh it's it's the best stretch we've had so far. Yeah, it's closest we've gotten. All right. Uh, so I'm at 2.5. My next card, I do not remember this guy. Catcher for the Rockies, Gary Bennett. Gary Bennett. I don't have any memory of him either. Gary Bennett like Beckham? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's very holiday-esque. Uh, wow, we played for 13 years in the big leagues. Wow. Uh, let's see. As, as a catcher, I'm assuming it looks like... Game totals here. Definitely just a perennial backup catcher. 2003, he spent with the Padres. 238 average, 296 on base, two home runs, 42 RBI, a 64 OPS plus, and that is good for a war of .6. I hate to tell you this, man, but was mentioned in the Mitchell report. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he commented, uh, as far as the report is concerned, to me, it's accurate. Obviously, it was a stupid decision. It was a mistake. <sighs> Gary Bennett, you just you're on the list. <laughs> He's on a couple lists. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's a minus point five. I might have to go back and reclaim the Troy Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that bumps me down to two point six. Next, uh, okay. Now I hopefully we'll get some uh, some points out of this. It is outfielder here for the Tigers, Bobby Higginson. Eleven years in the big leagues. All of it with Detroit. 2003, let's see, at the age of 32, he hit 235, 320 on base, a 14 home run season with 52 RBI and a 88 OPS plus, and that equals a .3 war. Uh, he does have some facial hair, so that'll be a .4, but that was not what I was hoping for from Bobby Higginson. Probably wasn't his best year. No, it was uh, near the end of his career. I still was uh, was hoping for a little bit more. This is interesting. Broke up a no-hitter in the ninth inning and two out uh, with a pinch hit home run off of Roy Halladay. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Tiger of the Year by the BBWAA in 97 and 2000. Joining uh, the uh, the other players that have been named twice, Justin Verlander, Miggy, Travis Fryman, Big Daddy, Cecil Fielder, Alan Trammell, Lou Whitaker, Kirk Gibson, Ron LaFleur. Hey, we know about him. Jammer Candel Candelario and Denny McLean. Some pretty good names right there. Yeah, those are some good names. All right, so that didn't really help me out a whole bunch. I am at three even. Next, we've got, oh, pitcher for the White Sox. Or, uh, I'm sorry, for the, for the White Sox. For the Red Sox. That is an automatic 
0.5 right there. It is Rolando Arrojo. Five years in the big leagues, three with the Sox, two with the Rays, part of a year with the Rockies. In 2003, he was not playing in the big leagues. Uh, he was playing, uh, oh, just triple A all year. Didn't make it up to the bigs. So uh, that does not help me out a whole lot. Uh, nothing else on this card other than that Red Sox uniform is going to help me out. That's all right. Maybe you'll get a manager's card next. <laughs> oh, he was traded for uh, Vinny Castilla. Uh, also traded from Mike Lansing, Jeff Fry, John Wasden. I just like to read these names that I sometimes haven't thought about for a while. I uh, remember right. the 92 Cuban Olympic team that won the gold medal. I get points for that? No, absolutely not. Just thought I'd share. All right. Well, I got four cards left. I'm about half your score. You're at 6.7. I'm 3.5. Next, we've got shortstop for the Tigers, Shane Halter. Now, uh, some uh, women might have uh, wished for a halter top. Does that count for Christmas? Boy, I think that's so close. But <laughs> I, no. Just leaning the other direction All here. Right. All right. Well, Shane Halter, eight years in the big leagues. Detroit for four, then Kansas City, the Mets, and the Angels. 2003 with Detroit, he hit 217, 269 on base. 12 home runs, 30 RBI, a 65 OPS plus. I know where this is headed. Oh, a war of 1.3, though. Oh, that's not that bad. No, I'll take that. Uh, nothing else on the card is going to help me out, but that takes a chunk out of your lead right there. The uh, the dude was quite the utility man. He played every position in 2000. Including, including yeah, well, he, he pitched twice in his career, too, in 98 and 2000. Overall, he appeared in two games, pitched one inning, gave up one hit, no runs, walked one, and that's it. So Not he, bad. He, had the, he got the ball over the plate, got him uh, to put it in play. Played absolutely everywhere. See why he's a valuable guy. All right. I nothing else to really talk about Shane Halter, but I'm now at 4.8 with uh, three cards left. And uh -oh. now I've got outfield. Oh, I got a lot of Tigers. Uh, outfielder Wendell McGee. Uh, I don't think he played. No, he uh, did not play. Seven years in the big leagues. 2002 was his last year. So uh, that doesn't help me out a whole lot. Uh, let's see. He went to uh, AAA. He spent, well, he spent the whole year in the minors in 2003 and then played uh, for the Long Island Ducks in the Atlantic League for two years. But none of that helps me. No, it does not. All right. Well, I guess we're not going to, not going to get any points out of that, Wendell. So big help you were. All right. <laughs> I got two cards left here. Uh, pitcher here for the Reds. Now, I remember this guy because uh, one of my good friends growing up uh, as a Ute in uh, in Northern California here uh, had the same name, but it was not him. Uh, it's Scott Sullivan. Ten years in the big leagues, nine with the Reds, and then split a year between the Royals and the White Sox. And uh, that year was uh, 2003. <laughs> Overall, he went 6-0. and uh, He was a reliever, so kind of a vulture 6 0 yeah. there. 3.66 ERA, 64 innings, 56 strikeouts, a 117 ERA plus. And all of that will equal a positive 0. 0.7. Can't complain too much. No, I mean, he could have a mustache or something, but sure. he chose not to. So. Uh, born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which really doesn't have anything to do with the reference. I just like saying Tuscaloosa. You're very easily amused, aren't you? I Yeah, that's uh, that was on all my report cards as a kid. Uh, submarine pitcher. I remember that definitely. And the, oh, yeah. the, the card here that's definitely right. definitely shows that uh, had back problems because of that and currently has three children. <laughs> that's well, good for him. That's it. No names. Uh, currently, he could have more or less at this point. We don't know, but. That's all we get. All right, so I'm down to one card. I am at 5.57. You're at 6.7. So you have a 1.2 war lead. And uh-oh. Well, the wire. this guy is a good player. Uh, uh -oh. I really liked him. Uh, he and his brother, uh, we have found out now, are not great people. I don't know if he was suspended or not for domestic violence during his career. But uh, here with the Pirates, it is Brian Giles. Boy, I, I really like the Giles brothers here. Uh, not to be confused, the Jay Giles and his band. Let's see, overall 15 years in the big leagues. Pirates for, uh, I'm sorry, Padres for seven, Pirates for five, Cleveland for four. In 2003, he split time between the Bucks and the Dads. Overall, uh, let's see, 299 average, 427 on base. Wow. Wow. Uh, let's see, 20 home runs, 34 doubles, 88 RBI, and a 145 OPS plus. 
And that will equal a war of 4.6. Wow, big year for Giles. I mean, is this similar to Bobby Higginson coming in and with two outs in the in the ninth and a pinch hit home run to Very much so. break up <laughs> Roy Halliday's? And, and his personal life issues are not going to minus four points. So yeah. I think you've won yet another game. Well, I mean, it's not surprising. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not shocked that I've won again. <laughs> you talk such a game, man. <laughs> Let's see. Giles is sued by a former girlfriend for $10 million, saying uh, he broke an uh, implied agreement that he would take care of her for an indefinite period of time. That sounds a little sketchy. Uh, not a lot. <laughs> not a lot of specifics there. But uh, it's an interesting. Uh, following Giles dispute with <laughs> Olvera and given the nature of the court case, Giles endorsement contract with Nair hair removal products was terminated. <laughs> <laughs> you had an endorsement from Nair hair removal. All right. Well, that leads us to find, uh, did he do a commercial <laughs> for Nair? <laughs> <laughs> because if so, gosh, darn it, we're going to definitely have to make fun of it, but, uh, I don't see anything. We'll do a little bit more digging. And see if who in the why is Nair hair products? They must have had some other product other than hair removal. Uh, yeah. Obviously aimed at men that they were pushing at this point. <laughs> because, <laughs> you would think so. I, I don't. If he was a professional swimmer, maybe. <laughs> yeah. You All know? right. Well, whatever. Uh, Brian Giles, you've at least come through. That puts me up to seventeen wins. Oh, I can smell that champagne already. That's some bad champagne if you can smell it, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, we, I'm an A's fan. We don't get the best. But uh, that's going to do it for this <laughs> holiday version of uh, Wax Facts Heroes. Sadly enough, no holiday um, uh, no holiday names. Like not the, a, the only close one was uh, Holiday giving up the home run to Higginson. Or, or Troy uh, Santa Claus. Yes. But yeah, all right. Either of them count. So, but you know, we had to make some sort of reference. <laughs> all right. So that's going to do it for Wax Specs Heroes. That'll also do it for our holiday edition. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us throughout this year and the previous years. Uh, you know, I know we've uh, been a little bit inconsistent uh, these last couple of months. <laughs> Maybe that'll be our New Year's resolution. We'll, yeah, we'll try to be more consistent idea. again. But again, you know, I'm going to fantasy camp right after the New Year. So that'll be one at least one week that we are not going to be doing this. But uh, we appreciate it. Uh, get Let us know. Who do you think is going to have a better season during their, their prime? Is it going to be Ricky Henderson as a starting pitcher or Nolan Ryan leading off and playing in the outfield? <laughs> I've already cast my vote, and it was a shocking vote nonetheless. It was. But uh, if you want to tell us, uh, look in the show notes. Just do a search for Two Strike Noise. That is TWO Strike Noise. We're all over the place. Uh, you can get a hold of us and uh, let us know. Uh, we also have an email address that Mark has got uh, tattooed on himself at this point. Yeah, it was an expensive tattoo because I got it tattooed across my entire chest. Mm. Yeah, it, you can write to us at Two Strike Noise. Spell it out, TWO Strike Noise at gmail.com. I would have guessed you would have gotten it on your forehead backwards. So if you ever forgot, you could just look in a mirror and, and see what it was. I can't stand looking at myself in the mirror. Uh, thanks, two of us. All right. So that'll right. do it for this episode of Two Strike Noise. Happy holidays, everybody. We'll see you in the new year on the next episode of Two Strike Noise. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great day. <laughs>